Hey everybody, what's up y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Tammy Talks here. Let's talk the ultimatum, queer love. This is episode nine, ultimatum day. If you are brand new to the channel or you are a returning viewer that has not yet subscribed to the channel, I hope that this is the video that changes your mind and gets you to hit that red subscribe button. If you are one of my returning subscribers, what up though? Let's get into the show y'all. All right, so very anticlimactic. Very anticlimactic. And I'm not saying that from the guise of I wanted a bunch of like drama or stuff like that, but very anticlimactic. I personally think it's bull that four out of these five couples said yes. It's unrealistic. It's unrealistic, but let's talk about it. Mal and Yoli. So we pick up where the last episode exactly left off with Mal proposing. Y Yoli says yes. Yoli says yes. So Yoli then asks, why did it take Mal so long to um, propose? Why did it take her wall being on or her back being on the wall and, you know, Yoli threatening to walk away? Why did it have to take all of that for Mal to want to wanna propose? And Mal said, it's not really just about my back being on the wall. So I don't even want you to think that or get that confused. That's not what it was. Um... Mal says that she thought that when you went into um, a, re a, a relationship like this, when you got um, engaged, she assumed that right after she proposed that it was going to be, all right, let's pick a house, let's do this, let's start right away. She thought that everything had like this huge, very quick domino effect. And she now realizes through the help of this process that that's just not how it has to go. You can really do things on your own terms and it's kind of shocking that Mal didn't really know that but nonetheless that's what she learned from this cool so Yoli said that she was very hesitant coming into this still on who she was going to pick or even if she should pick herself she then goes on to say you know Xander is ready and willing to move forward with me so it's really on some look if we're going to do this, I want to do it. I want to make sure that you are in it for the right reasons and not just because you don't want to lose me. So that's Yoli's main thing. So Mal acknowledges, look, I know that you are still in love with 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 uh, Xander. I get you're in love with two people. I would never disrespect the love and the connection that you did have with Yoli, but I mean, through with Xander, but I now am willing to work through this. I'm willing to help you get through this because it's always been you for me. So Mal also, thank you for pointing this out, Mal, does not want to feel as if she is fighting to get her back. Now, if you're going to be in this with me, be in this with me, but don't just say yes. If your heart is truly not in it, if you're not going to believe and believe in us, if you're not going to show up as your best self in this process, I think, and I've said it before, I think that yeah, uh, Yoli kind of bullshitted Mal a lot of the way through this process, same with Xander and Vanessa. Because of the simple fact that when they it, they were back in their trial marriage with the people that they came with, Xander and Yoli were still connecting. They were still talking to each other. They were doing what really you shouldn't have been doing. You should have been focused on your, your partner that you came into this with. And the fact that both of them were doing that that's why I would say Yoli is really on some bull on top of the fact that Yoli was like leading with the fact that Xander has been like preparing monetary wise for this. Xander has the insurance for this. Xander had that. So it's like, did you really want to be with Xander because you really wanted to be with Xander? Or is it because Xander had on paper what you felt that Mal didn't? That's just my opinion, right? So, so uh, Yoli said yes, that she is ready and willing to move forward with this. She's capable of moving forward and being on land. Girl, you better be. So then we get Mildred and Tiff. And this just. So Tiff is pouring out her soul. Mildred is like, are you done talking? And I get that Mildred is trying to work on the interrupting part, but it came across very condescending to me at least it didn't seem very genuine uh Mildred is afraid that Tiff won't love her unconditional which is really rich because 
Tiff is the one that should be more concerned that you're not in love with her. You just want to be married. So Tiff proposes, Mildred accepts. Okay. <laughs> okay. I feel like by the reunion, um, <laughs> I feel like by the reunion, they're not going to still be together if they are if they ever got married. I just don't see that. We then get to Aussie and Sam. Um, if Aussie don't do nothing else, Aussie said, I'm going to be pressed to the gods. You hear me? Every time we see Aussie, Aussie's up in there ironing. I said, I know that's right. Starch it up. Starch it up. So Sam points out that there were so many moments where even in their, just their trial marriage of Aussie walking away. And those are the moments that kind of concern her when we're going into a marriage. Within those three, I know how to add y'all, three. Within those three moments, those three weeks, we saw a, a bunch, just the moments that we saw, there were a lot of big moments where Aussie walked away. On top of the things that she did or that Aussie did when um, they were in the, the trial marriage with Mildred. So Aussie goes on to say that I finally hear you, Sam. I finally hear you. I see you. I recognize what the issue is. And, you know, I, I want to be better. And I'm sorry, but to me, it's bull. It's bull. And Sam and Aussie especially should not have gotten engaged. They shouldn't have. So Aussie tells a story about penguins and how they search for rocks, the the very best rock that they can, and that's how they pick their partner. They go and find like little pebbles on the on the beach, or on the wherever they are, whatever type of um, penguin they are. They go and find a pebble to present. That's how they become lifelong partners. So Aussie gives Sam a heart shaped rock. I was like. <laughs> While it was a beautiful rock, I thought that was it. I did. Aussie then proposes. Sam accepts. Aussie hasn't had any growth. Aussie hasn't taken any real accountability. Aussie hasn't shown any promise. Aussie hasn't shown any progress. Aussie hasn't. Aussie hasn't. That's just it. Um, so the fact that Sam, and it just makes me wonder, is it that you really, and I'm talking Sam and Mildred, Yoli, do y'all really want to be married to the person that you feel is for you? The person that you feel is your person? Or do you just want to be able to say you're married? Because there is no way that Sam, who has said that, who we have seen Aussie be disrespectful, disengaged, um, have horrible communication, lacks accountability, walks away. And I'm not saying that like nobody is saying that Aussie should want to be in there ready to tussle and argument and argue at every single time. But Sam can just ask a simple question. And if it's not something Aussie wants to talk about, then it's the end of the world. I am flabbergasted that Sam accepted Aussie's proposal. Aussie doesn't want to be married. Aussie has made that clear that Aussie's not even out. And I'm not saying that that Aussie has to, well, she's out, Aussie's out now because it's on TV, but you haven't even met Aussie. It's like, Sam, and, uh, good luck. Good luck. So then we have Vanessa and Xander, and boy, was I wrong. I thought, okay, we'll get to it. So we have Vanessa and Xander. So disappointing in Xander's outfit choice. What is this thermal shirt? Like, I'm sorry. We have seen Xander wear, you know, nice little collar shirt, nice little situation. That's what you wore? Okay. Okay, Xander. So Vanessa feels that Xander, even though Xander brought her to this process, that Xander is now taking 
away the ultimatum from Vanessa and now she's the one that has to make the decision which is true so Xander tells Vanessa lays out everything about how how much fun they've had and all this other type of stuff Xander said that she has dreamed of proposing before but in her dreams when she has dreamed of proposing to Vanessa they were both secure and very sure that they were the one for each other and Xander does not think that they are there anymore she doesn't think that they are there she feels that Vanessa deserves more than she can she can offer her Vanessa said that she was holding on to hope and she was hoping that the old Xander would appear the Xander of you know a couple of months ago that you know the Xander when they did all these trips together and all this other stuff together she Vanessa's been waiting on that Xander to appear not this new Xander that has fallen in love with someone else so Vanessa still doesn't know what to make of this this process but Vanessa does know that she she wants Xander but she wants Xander to be happy you know more so than anything else they break up Xander is is crying way more than Vanessa I think Vanessa was trying to save face Vanessa then goes on to say that I don't understand why you don't want to grow alongside me so I think in Vanessa's Vanessa's perspective with this Vanessa feels like I've I've made some strides I'm trying to be better you've seen some progress with me but I just don't understand why you don't want to it's almost like Vanessa's like why can't like let me see I can phrase this it's almost like Vanessa does not understand why Xander can't just wait for her it's almost like that's almost the the vibe that is given. Why can't you wait for me? But Vanessa took the breakup very well, very maturely, and they break up. We then see Xander and Yoli talking. Yoli is wondering if she made the best decision for herself. If you have to wonder, then you didn't. If you have to wonder, then you didn't. If you're second guessing, then you didn't. I have never made a decision for myself and second guessed it. Because if you're truly putting yourself first and you're doing what's on your heart and what you think is the best for you, then you're not going to second guess it, right? That's just my opinion. So Yoli took off her ring to meet up with Xander. So, because one of the first things that Xander did was check Yoli's left hand. Yoli was like, calm down, calm down. No, it's it's valid. It's valid to check your hand. I, I, I really feel like Xander and Yoli should have met up first and made that decision and then met up with their partners afterwards. That's how I think this should have went. So, Xander tells Yoli that her and Vanessa did break up. Yoli said that she wanted to wait until I'm sorry Yoli waited until Xander poured out her heart um and is telling her like I'm picking her I'm ready to go all in with you ready to have a family with you ready to do all this stuff with you Yoli waited until in that moment to say oh well I I'm I'm engaged to Mal and I just took off my ring because I, I I wanted to know where you were I wanted to be sure of you so Xander I'm gonna get there let me finish my notes so Yoli thinks that picking Xander is like picking herself it it would be I think I think it would be Yoli wants to be with Xander Mal all but gave you her blessing and, and her support for you to go with who you really wanted to go with So Yoli is like, do you want to just walk away? So they walk off scene as they like, broke the fourth wall as if the cameras weren't going to follow them. They're over to the side. They're hugging. Yoli is crying. Yoli is saying that if love were enough, she would be. If love were enough, then she would be with Xander. 
If it all just came down to love, then I would be with you, Xander. But she feels a sense of loyalty to Mal. Am I the only one that thought that Yoli was like talking in circles? And this could very well just be because Yoli truly and honestly just does not know what she wants to do, how she wants to do this. It very well could be that, not taking that away from her. But Yoli talked in a bunch of circles and I feel like, I feel like she played Mal. I do. I don't feel like Yoli is going to be all in with Mal. I don't. I don't think that. So Yoli walks off sobbing. She goes and sits on the curb. Xander walks off and Xander is like, I think y'all got enough footage because Xander is ready to go cry. Uh, Yoli feels that she is walking away from the love of her life, basically. Xander says in her confessional, she feels like shit. You should. You should. Because Yoli, like, low-key plays you a little bit. She plays you a little bit. But she does not think that Yoli made a mistake. Yoli picked what she thought was the best for her. That's very mature. Very mature. So then Yoli calls after Xander. I said, girl, I know you ain't about to go over there. But she goes over and hugs her. Here's the thing. Yoli is going to resent Mal. And it's not because she was forced to accept Mal's proposal. Because she wasn't. Mal has been very respectful of the entire process. We've said that over and over again. Mal's been very respectful of, of this process. But... You don't want to be with Mal. If you're staying just out of loyalty, I would prefer you go with, with Xander. Don't stay to me out of just loyalty. Because sometimes blind loyalty is what gets people messed up. Sometimes blind loyalty is what causes resentment as well. You don't want to be with Mal. You should have picked Xander. But then if I'm Xander, then I'm questioning. So you... you Let's be real. What Yoli basically said was, was Xander, even though that we both said that we wanted to be together and we were all in and you told me that you were all in on me, I still picked Mal because I just didn't trust that you were all in. Like, that's what it sounds like. Whereas Xander then blew up her world and it's probably best she got away from Vanessa. They were growing in two different paths. But Xander is the one that came out of here with nothing. I thought it was going to be Yoli. I thought Yoli was going to say no to Mal and then Xander was going to end up staying with Vanessa. So the fact that it flipped and Xander was the one that walked away with nothing, I said, God damn. I mean, you got all the ass <laughs> throughout this process. You was the only one, the only one out there cracking backs, right? Wow. And then we get Lexi and Ray. Uh, poor Ray. Ray still doesn't know what she wants to do. She hasn't quite made that decision yet. She says she's going to make that decision um, once she is like in the spur of the moment. Ray doesn't know what she wants to do. Doesn't know if she's ready for marriage still. Child, I said y'all are 30 minutes away from making this decision. When they were talking, Le uh, Lexi was squeezing the shit out of her hand, squeezing her hand, almost on some, please don't leave me, please don't leave me, please don't leave me, baby, please don't leave me. Ray tells Lexi that losing her isn't in the cards for her. She proposes. Lexi accepts, and then Lexi proposes back. So now they both have rings. Ring gang, ring gang. I hope, I don't mind Lexi and Ray getting me, um, engaged. I don't. I hope that Lexi does not beat her over the head with this Vanessa thing. I hope that Lexi doesn't one day in the heat of an argument yell out. But remember when you did that with like, I hope that never comes out. I expected them. Honestly, I expected them to, to get together. I expected them to get engaged. Mildred and Tiff should not have. There has been no uptick, no change in their communication. And this is what I mean by that. So Ray, Mal, Tiff, Aussie, Vanessa. 
these five women were were posed with an ultimatum and proposed to me or we're done, right? You're not demanding any change in behavior, any change in communication, any change in anything whatsoever. Y'all just want the ring. Y'all just want to be married. Because let's be real, there has been no major growth. Aside from Mal, who now realizes, which this could have been handled in a therapy session or a a, a sit-down conversation, who now realizes that, hey, I don't have to, you know, be a millionaire and have every single piece of life set up back to back to back and ready for us to get engaged. They didn't have a real issue. Fine. But these other four ladies that had major communication issues that, you know, or said that marriage just wasn't for them. If somebody says, I don't think marriage is for me, why do you think forcing them to propose to you is the best answer? Why is that the best thing to do? But let's talk about it down below, y'all. Let me know what you guys thought about all of the couples staying together. What do you guys think about Xander and Vanessa breaking up? That was probably for the best. What do y'all think? Like, what do y'all think is going to happen? Y'all have probably watched the reunion already. I have watched the reunion already. So let's talk about their answers down below. Who do you think should have walked away? Are you happy that they did stay married or did they, that they did stay together, that they did propose? If you have not already subscribed to the channel, thumbs up the video, hit the notification bell. So you are notified when I post the reunion. Peace.